Section 1 of the Holy Scriptures According to the Masoretic Text, a New Translation. Judges. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Judges. Summary of the Book and Joshua, an Introduction to Judges. Judges, Chapter 1. And it came to pass, after the death of Joshua, that the children of Israel asked of the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us first against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him, and Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they smote of them in Bezek ten thousand men, and they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they smote the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs, and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes, cut off, gathered food under my table. As I have done, so God hath requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. And the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem, and took it, and smote it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. And afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the hill country, and in the south, and in the lowland. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before time was Kiriath Arba, and they smote Shishai, and Ahiman, and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir before time was Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, he that smiteth Kiriath Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she alighted from off her gas, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing for that thou hast set me in the south land. Give me therefore springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which is in the south of Arad. And they went and dwelt with the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they smote the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it and the name of the city was called hormah also judah took gaza with the border thereof and ashkelon with the border thereof and ekron with the border thereof and the lord was with judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the hill country for he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron and they gave hebron unto caleb as moses had spoken and he drove out thence the three sons of anath and the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to spy out Bethel. Now the name of the city before time was Luz. And the watchers saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will deal kindly with thee. And he showed them the entrance into the city, and they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let the man go, and all his family. And the man went into the land of the Hittites, and built a city, and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. And Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shehem and its towns, nor of Tanakh and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblium and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns, 
but the canaanites were resolved to dwell in that land and it came to pass when israel was waxen strong that they put the canaanites to task work but did in no wise drive them out and ephraim drove not out the canaanites that dwelt in gezer but the canaanites dwelt in gezer among them zebulun drove not out the inhabitants of kitron nor the inhabitants of nahola but the canaanites dwelt among them and became tributary asher drove not out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of zidon nor of alab nor of oxib nor of helba nor of aphek nor of rahab but the asherites dwelt among the canaanites the inhabitants of the land for they did not drive them out naphtali drove not out the inhabitants of beth shemesh nor the inhabitants of beth anna but he dwelt among the canaanites the inhabitants of the land nevertheless the inhabitants of beth shemesh and of beth anath became tributary unto them and the amorites forced the children of dan into the hill country for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley but the amorites were resolved to dwell in haheres in Ijalon, and in shalbim yet the hand of the house of joseph prevailed so that they became tributary and the border of the amorites was from the ascent of acrabim from selah and upward chapter two and the angel of the lord came up from gilgad to bojim and he said i made you go up out of egypt and i have brought you into the land which i swore unto your fathers and i said i will never break my covenant with you and ye shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land ye shall break down their altars but ye have not hearkened unto my voice what is this ye have done wherefore i also said i will not drive them out from before you but they shall be unto you as snares and their god shall be a trap unto you and it came to pass when the angel of the lord spoke these words unto all the children of israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept and they called the name of that place bokim and they sacrificed there unto the lord now when joshua had sent the people away the children of israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land and the people served the lord all the days of joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived joshua who had seen all the great work of the lord that he had wrought for israel and joshua the son of nun the servant of the lord died being a hundred and ten years old and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in timnath Harris, in the hill country of ephraim on the north of the mountain of gash and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them that knew not the lord nor yet the work which he had wrought for israel and the children of israel did that which was evil in the sight of the lord and served balaam and they forsook the lord the god of their fathers who brought them out of the land of egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the peoples that were round about them and worshipped them and they provoked the lord and they forsook the lord and served baal and the ashtaroth and the anger of the lord was kindled against israel and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them and he gave them over into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies whithersoever they went out the hand of the lord was against them for evil as the lord had spoken and as the lord had sworn unto them and they were sore distressed and the lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hand of those that spoiled them and yet they hearkened not unto their judges for they went astray after other gods and worshipped them they turned aside quickly out of the way wherein their fathers walked obeying the commandments of the lord they did not so and when the lord raised them up judges then the lord was with the judge and saved them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for it repented the lord because of their groaning by reason of them that oppressed them and crushed them but it came to pass when the judge was dead that they turned back and dealt more corruptly than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to worship them they left nothing undone of their practices nor of their stubborn way and the anger of the lord was kindled against israel and he said because this nation have transgressed my covenant which i commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice i also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations that joshua left when he died 
that by them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it, or not. So the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. End of chapter 2 Section 2 of The Holy Scriptures According to the Masoretic Text, A New Translation, Judges. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Colleen McMahon. Judges, Section 2. Othniel, Ehud, the minor judge Shamgar, and prophetess Deborah. Chapters 3 through 5. Chapter 3. Now these are the nations which the Lord left, to prove Israel by them, even as many as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know, to teach them war, at the least such as before time knew nothing thereof, namely, the five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites, and the Zidonians, and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entrance of Hamath. And they were there to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their own daughters to their sons, and served their gods. And the children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served the Baalim and the Asheroth. Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he gave them over into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Aram Naharim, and the children of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a saviour to the children of Israel, who saved them, even Othniel the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. And he went out to war, and the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathaim king of Aram into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. And the land had rest forty years, and Othniel the son of Kenaz died. And the children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and he went and smote Israel, and they possessed the city of palm trees. And the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a saviour, Ehud the son of Gera the Benjamite, a man left-handed, and the children of Israel sent a present by him unto Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made him a sword, which had two edges, of a cubit length, and he girded it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he offered the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end of offering the present, he sent away the people that bore the present. But he himself turned back from the quarries that were by Gilgal, and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king. And he said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting by himself alone in his cool upper chamber. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat, and Ehud put forth his left hand, and took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade, for he drew not the sword out of his belly, and it came out behind. Then Ehud went forth into the porch, and shut the doors of the upper chamber upon him, and locked them. Now when he was gone out, his servants came, and they saw, and behold, the doors of the upper chamber were locked. And they said, Surely he is covering his feet in the cabinet of the cool chamber. And they tarried till they were ashamed. And behold, he opened not the doors of the upper chamber. Therefore they took the key, and opened them, and behold, their lord was fallen down dead on the earth. 
and Ehud escaped while they lingered, having passed beyond the quarries, and escaped unto Sarah. And it came to pass, when he was come, that he blew a horn in the hill country of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies the Moabites into your hand. And they went down after him, and took the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites, and suffered not a man to pass over. And they smote of Moab at that time about ten thousand men, every lusty man and every man of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest fourscore years. And after him was Shamgar the son of Anath, who smote of the Philistines six hundred men with an ox goad, and he also saved Israel. Chapter 4 And the children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, when Ehud was dead. And the Lord gave them over into the hand of Jabin king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, who dwelt in Harasheth Goim. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she sat under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in the hill country of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kedesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun, and I will draw unto thee to the brook Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thy hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thy honor, for the Lord will give Sisera over into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose, and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali together to Kadesh, and there went up ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite had severed himself from the Kenites, even from the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far as Elon Bezananin, which is by Kadesh. And they told Sisera that Barak the son of Abinoam had gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Harasheth Goim unto the brook Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thy hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera, and all his chariots, and all his host, with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot, and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots, and after the host, unto Harasheth Goim. And all the host of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. There was not a man left." Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera, and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And he turned in unto her into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk, and gave him drink, and covered him. And he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be, when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, that thou shalt say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent pin, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the pin into his temples, and it pierced through into the ground, for he was in a deep sleep. So he swooned and died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him, and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And he came unto her, and behold, Sisera lay dead, and the tent pin was in his temples. 
so god subdued on that day jabin the king of canaan before the children of israel and the hand of the children of israel prevailed more and more against jabin the king of canaan until they had destroyed jabin king of canaan chapter five then sang deborah and barak the son of abinoam on that day saying when men let grow their hair in israel when the people offer themselves willingly bless ye the lord hear o ye kings give ear o ye princes i unto the lord will i sing i will sing praise to the lord the god of israel lord when thou didst go forth out of seir when thou didst march out of the field of edom the earth trembled the heavens also dropped yea the clouds dropped water the mountains quaked at the presence of the lord even yon sinai at the presence of the lord the god of israel in the days of shamgar the son of anath in the days of jael the highways ceased and the travellers walked through byways the rulers ceased in israel they ceased until that thou didst arise deborah that thou didst arise a mother in israel they chose new gods then was war in the gates was there a shield or spear seen among forty thousand in israel my heart is toward the governors of israel that offered themselves willingly among the people bless ye the lord ye that ride on white asses ye that sit on rich cloths and ye that walk by the way tell of it louder than the voice of archers by the watering troughs there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the lord even the righteous acts of his rulers in israel then the people of the lord went down to the gates awake awake deborah awake awake utter a song arise barak and lead thy captivity captive thou son of abinoam then made he a remnant to have dominion over the nobles and the people the lord made me have dominion over the mighty out of ephraim came they whose root is in amalek after thee benjamin among thy peoples out of machir came down governors and out of zebulun they that handle the martial staff and the princes of issachar were with deborah as was issachar so was barak into the valley they rushed forth at his feet among the divisions of reuben they were great resolves of heart why saddest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings for the flocks at the divisions of reuben there were great searchings of heart gilead abode beyond the jordan and dan why doth he sojourn by the ships asher dwelt at the shore of the sea and abideth by its bays zebulun is a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death and naphtali upon the high places of the field the kings came they fought then fought the kings of canaan in tanakh by the waters of megiddo they took no gain of money they fought from heaven the stars in their courses fought against sisera the brook kishon swept them away that ancient brook the brook kishon o my soul tread them down with strength then did the horse hoofs stamp by reason of the prancings the prancing of their mighty ones curse ye morose said the angel of the lord curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof because they came not to the help of the lord to the help of the lord against the mighty blessed above women shall yael be the wife of heber the kenite above women in the tent shall she be blessed water he asked milk she gave him in a lordly bowl she brought him curd her hand she put to the tent pin and her right hand to the workman's hammer and with the hammer she smote sisera she smote through his head yea she pierced and struck through his temples at her feet he sunk he fell he lay at her feet he sunk he fell where he sunk there he fell down dead through the window she looked forth and peered the mother of sisera through the lattice why is his chariot so long in coming why tarry the wheels of his chariots the wisest of her princesses answer her yea she returneth answer to herself are they not finding are they not dividing the spoil a damsel two damsels to every man to sisera a spoil of dyed garments a spoil of dyed garments of embroidery two dyed garments of broidery for the neck of every spoiler so perish all thine enemies o lord but they that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might and the land had rest forty years 
End of Judges, Chapter 5. Recording by Colleen McMahon. Section 3 of the Holy Scriptures, according to the Maseratic Text, a new translation, Judges. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Judges, Gideon, chapters 6 through 8. And the children of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of Midian the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains, and the caves, and the strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, they came up against them. And they encamped against them, and destroyed the produce of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance in Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came in as locusts for multitude. Both they and their camels were without number, and they came into the land to destroy it. And Israel was brought very low because of Midian, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of Midian, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drove them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not fear the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But ye have not hearkened unto my voice. And the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth, which was in Orpra, that belonged unto Joash the Abirzite, and his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where are all his wondrous works, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath cast us off, and delivered us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned towards him and said, Go in this thy might, and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found favor in thy sight, then show me a sign that it is thou that talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth by present, and lay it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come back. And Gideon went in, and made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of meal. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the terebinth, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there went up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And Gideon saw 
that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for as much as I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Adonai Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Orphrah of the Abirzites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's bullock, and the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal, that thy father hath, and cut down the Asherah that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this stronghold, in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah, which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had spoken unto him. And it came to pass, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, so that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was broken down, and the Asherah was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon the son of Joash hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath broken down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the Asherah that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye contend for Baal, or will ye save him? He that will contend for him shall be put to death before morning. If he be a god, let him contend for himself, because one hath broken down his altar. Therefore on that day he was called Jerubbabel, saying, Let Baal contend against him, because he hath broken down his altar. Now all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east assembled themselves together, and they passed over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon, and he blew a horn, and Abizer was gathered together after him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they also were gathered together after him, and he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast spoken, behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there be dew on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the ground, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast spoken. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow, and pressed the fleece together, and wrung dew out of the fleece a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be kindled against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me make trial, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early, and pitched beside in Harad, and the camp of Midian was on the north side of them, by Gibeath Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore make proclamation in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and trembling, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be, 
that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the people go every man unto his place. So they took the victuals of the people in their hand, and their horns, and he sent all the men of Israel, every man, unto his tent, but retained the three hundred men. And the camp of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down upon the camp, for I have delivered it into thy hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Purah, thy servant, down to the camp. And thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward shall thy hands be strengthened to go down upon the camp. Then went he down with Pura his servant unto the outermost part of the armed men that were in the camp. Now the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like locusts for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand which is upon the seashore for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man telling a dream unto his fellow, and saying, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, and came unto the tent, and smote it that it fell, and turned it upside down, that the tent lay flat. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God hath delivered Midian, and all the host. And it was so. When Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped, and he returned into the camp of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put into the hands of all of them horns and empty pitchers, with torches within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise, and behold, when I come to the outermost part of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow the horn, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the horns also on every side of all the camp, and say, For the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outermost part of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, when they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the horns, and broke in pieces the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the horns, and broke the pitchers, and held the torches in their left hands, and the horns in their right hands, wherewith to blow. And they cried, The sword for the Lord and for Gideon! And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran, and they shouted and fled. And they blew the three hundred horns, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled as far as Beth Shitta toward Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Mahola by Tabith. And the men of Israel were gathered together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after Midian. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against Midian, and take before them the waters as far as Beth-barah, and also the Jordan. 
so all the men of ephraim were gathered together and took the waters as far as bethbara and also the jordan and they took the two princes of midian oreb and zeb and they slew oreb at the rock of oreb and zeb they slew at the winepress of zeb and pursued midian and they brought the heads of oreb and zeb to gideon beyond the jordan and the men of ephraim said unto him why hast thou served us thus that thou didst not call us when thou wentest to fight with midian and they did chide with him sharply and he said unto them what have i now done in comparison with you is not the gleaning of ephraim better than the vintage of abezer god hath delivered into your hand the princes of midian oreb and zeb and what was i able to do in comparison with you then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that and gideon came to the jordan and passed over he and the three hundred men that were with him faint yet pursuing and he said unto the men of succoth give i pray you loaves of bread unto the people that follow me for they are faint and i am pursuing after zeba and zalumana the kings of midian and the princes of succoth said are the hands of zeba and zalmunna now in thy power that we should give bread unto thine army and gideon said therefore when the lord hath delivered zeba and zalmunna into my hand then i will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars and he went up thence to penuel and spoke unto them in like manner and the men of penuel answered him as the men of succoth had answered and he spoke also unto the men of penuel saying when i come back in peace i will break down this tower now zeba and zalmunna were in karkor and their hosts with them about fifteen thousand men all that were left of all the host of the children of the east for there fell a hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword and gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of noba and jogbeha and smote the host for the host was secure and zeba and zalmunna fled and he pursued after them and he took the two kings of midian zeba and zalmunna and discomfited all the host and gideon the son of joash returned from the battle from the ascent of Herez, and he caught a young man of the men of succoth and inquired of him and he wrote down for him the princes of succoth and the elders thereof seventy and seven men and he came unto the men of succoth and said behold zeba and zalmunna concerning whom ye did taunt me saying are the hands of zeba and zalmunna now in thy power that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary and he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars and with them he taught the men of succoth and he broke down the tower of penuel and slew the men of the city then said he unto zeba and zalmunna where are the men whom ye slew at tabor and they answered as thou art so were they of one form with the children of a king and he said they were my brethren the sons of my mother as the lord liveth if ye had saved them alive i would not slay you and he said unto jether his firstborn up and slay them but the youth drew not his sword for he feared because he was yet a youth then zeba and zalmunna said rise thou and fall upon us for as the man is so is his strength and gideon arose and slew zeba and zalmunna and took the crescents that were on their camels necks then the men of israel said unto gideon rule thou over us both thou and thy son and thy son's son also for thou hast saved us out of the hand of midian and gideon said unto them i will not rule over you neither shall my son rule over you the lord shall rule over you and gideon said unto them i would make a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his spoil for they had golden earrings because they were ishmaelites and they answered we will willingly give them 
and they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his spoil and the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold beside the crescents and the pendants and the purple raiment that was on the kings of midian and beside the chains that were about their camels necks and gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city even in orpha and all israel went astray after it there and it became a snare unto gideon and to his house so midian was subdued before the children of israel and they lifted up their heads no more and the land had rest forty years in the days of gideon and jerubbabel the son of joash went and dwelt in his own house and gideon had threescore and ten sons of his body begotten for he had many wives and his concubine that was in shechem she also bore him a son and he called his name abimelech and gideon the son of joash died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulchre of joash his father in orpha of the abirzrites and it came to pass as soon as gideon was dead that the children of israel again went astray after the balaam and made baal bareth their god and the children of israel remembered not the lord their god who had delivered them out of the hand of all their enemies on every side neither showed they kindness to the house of jerubbabel namely gideon according to all the goodness which he had shown unto israel End of Judges chapter 8 Recording by Scarlet, Louisiana Section 4 of the Holy Scriptures According to the Masoretic Text A New Translation, Judges This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Matt Bensing of Oxford, Ohio. Judges King Abimelech and Minor Judges, Tola and Jer, Chapters 9 and 10. Chapter 9 And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and spoke with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak i pray you in the ears of all the men of shechem which is better for you that all the sons of jerubbaal who are threescore and ten persons rule over you or that one rule over you remember also that i am your bone and your flesh and his mother's brethren spoke of him in the ears of all the men of shechem all these words and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. For they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Berith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light fellows who followed him. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbaal, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem assembled themselves together, and all Beth Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the terebinth of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice, and cried, and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, seeing that by me they honor God and man, and go to hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou, and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I leave my sweetness, and my good fruitage, and go to hold sway over the trees? 
and the tree said unto the vine, Come thou, and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to hold sway over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou, and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble, and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if ye have dealt truly and uprightly in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbaal and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, and adventured his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and uprightly with Jerubbaal and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem, and from Beth Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and went to Beer, and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. And Abimelech was prince over Israel three years. And God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech that the violence done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbaal might come, and that their blood might be laid upon Abimelech their brother, who slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, who strengthened his hands to slay his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech, and Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren, and went on to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their trust in him. And they went out into the field, and gathered their vineyards, and trod the grapes, and held festival, and went into the house of their god, and did eat and drink, and cursed Abimelech. And Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Jerubbaal, and Zebul his officer? Serve ye the men of Hamer, the father of Shechem? But why should we serve him? And would that this people were under my hand, then would I remove Abimelech. And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army, and come out. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech in Torma, saying, Behold, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his brethren are come to Shechem, and behold, they will incite the city against thee. Now therefore, up by night, thou and the people that are with thee, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be, that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early, and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that are with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt be able. And Abimelech rose up, and all the people that were with him by night, and they lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gael the son of Ebed went out, and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up, and the people that were with him, from the ambushment. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the tops of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, 
thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men and gael spoke again and said see there come people down by the middle of the land and one company cometh by the way of elon Menomium. then said zebul unto him where is now thy mouth that thou saidest who is abimelech that we should serve him is not this the people that thou hast despised go out now i pray and fight with them and gael went out before the men of shechem and fought with abimelech and abimelech chased him and he fled before him and there fell many wounded even unto the entrance of the gate and abimelech dwelt at aramah and zebul drove out gael and his brethren that they should not dwell in shechem and it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field and it was told abimelech and he took the people and divided them into three companies and lay in wait in the field and he looked and behold the people were coming forth out of the city and he rose up against them and smote them and abimelech and the companies that were with him rushed forward and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city and the two companies rushed upon all that were in the field and smote them and abimelech fought against the city all that day and he took the city and slew the people that were therein and he beat down the city and sowed it with salt and when all the men of the tower of shechem heard thereof they entered into the hold of the house of el berith and it was told abimelech that all the men of the tower of shechem were gathered together and abimelech got him up to mount zalman he and all the people that were with him and abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it up and laid it on his shoulder and he said unto the people that were with him what ye have seen me do make haste and do as i have done and all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of shechem died also about a thousand men and women then went abimelech to thebes and encamped against thebes and took it but there was a strong tower within the city and thither fled all the men and women even all they of the city and shut themselves in and got them up to the roof of the tower and abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went close unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire and a certain woman cast an upper millstone upon abimelech's head and broke his skull then he called hastily unto the young man his armour-bearer and said unto him draw thy sword and kill me that men say not of me a woman slew him and his young man thrust him through and he died and when the men of israel saw that abimelech was dead they departed every man unto his place thus god requited the wickedness of abimelech which he did unto his father in slaying his seventy brethren and all the wickedness of the men of shechem did god requite upon their heads and upon them came the curse of jotham the son of jerobeel chapter ten and after abimelech there arose to save israel tola the son of push the son of dodo a man of issachar and he dwelt in shamir in the hill country of ephraim and he judged israel twenty and three years and died and was buried in shamir and after him arose jair the gileadite and he judged israel twenty and two years and he had thirty sons that rode on thirty ass colts and they had thirty cities which are called havath jair unto this day which are in the land of gilead and jair died and was buried in Kaman.
and the children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Balaam, and the Astaroth, and the gods of Aram, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord, and served him not. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the children of Ammon. And they oppressed and crushed the children of Israel that year. Eighteen years oppressed they all the children of Israel that were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. And the children of Ammon passed over the Jordan to fight also against Judah, and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, in that we have forsaken our God, and have served the Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I save you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites did oppress you, and ye cried unto me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore, I will save you no more. Go, and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Only deliver us, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people, the princes of Gilead, said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. End of Judges Chapter 10 Read by Matt Penzing of Oxford, Ohio Section 5 The Holy Scriptures According to the Masoretic Text A New Translation Judges This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Judges, Section 5, Jephthah, and Minor Judges, Ibzon, Elon, and Abdon, Chapters 11 and 12. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah, and Gilead's wife bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain fellows to Jephthah, and they went out with him. And it came to pass after a while that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our chief, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me, and drive me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me now, when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore are we returned to thee now, that thou mayest go with us, and fight with the children of Ammon. And thou shalt be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me back home to fight with the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, I will be your head, 
And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord shall be a witness between us. Surely according to thy word so will we do. And then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and chief over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord and Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come unto me to fight against my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when he came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon even unto the Jabbok, and unto the Jordan, now therefore restore those cities peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon. And he said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when they came up from Egypt, and Israel walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea, and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom hearkened not, and in like manner he sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not, and Israel abode in Kadesh. Then he walked through the wilderness, and compassed the land of Edom, and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and they pitched on the other side of the Arnon. But they came not within the border of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land unto my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together, and pitched in Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the borders of the Amorites, from the Arnon even unto the Jabbok, and from the wilderness even unto the Jordan. So now the Lord, the God of Israel, hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And shouldest thou possess them, wilt not thou possess that which Shemash thy God giveth to thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God hath dispossessed from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon in its towns, and in Aror in its towns, and in all the cities that are along by the side of the Arnon three hundred years, wherefore did ye not recover them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearken not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent them. Then the Spirit of the Lord came unto Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hand, and he smote them from Aror until thou come to Meneth, even twenty cities, and unto abel Cherimim with a very great slaughter. So the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass, when he saw her, that he rent his clothes, and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art become my troubler. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord. Do unto me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. 
For as so much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may depart and go down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my companions. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. And she departed, she and her companions, and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she had not known man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephoth the Gileadite four days in a year. And the men of Ephraim were gathered together and passed to Zaphon. And they said unto Japhoth, Wherefore didst thou pass over to fight against children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thy house upon thee with fire. And Japhoth said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye saved me not out of their hand. And when I saw that ye saved me not, I put my life in my hand, and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day, to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead, and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye are fugitives of Ephraim, ye Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim, and in the midst of Manasseh. And the Gileadites took the fords of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. And it was so that when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me go over, the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said, Nay, then said they unto him, Say now, Shiboleth. And he said, Siboleth for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they laid hold on him, and slew him at the fords of the Jordan. And there fell at that time of Ephraim forty and two thousand. And Jephoth judged Israel six years. Then died Jephoth the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him Ebzon of Bethlehem judged Israel, and he had thirty sons and thirty daughters he sent abroad. And thirty daughters he brought in from abroad for his sons, and he judged Israel seven years. And Ebzon died and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. And he judged Israel ten years, and Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried in Ajolon, in the land of Zebulon. And after him Abdon the son of Hillel the Pyrathonite judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty sons' sons that rode on threescore and ten ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon the son of Hillel the Pyrathonite died and was buried in Pyrathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. End of Judges chapters 11 and 12section six of the holy scriptures according to the masoretic text a new translation judges samson chapters thirteen through sixteen chapter thirteen and the children of israel again did that which was evil in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hand of the philistines forty years and there was a certain man of zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bore not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and hast not born, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink no wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For, lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to save Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God, very terrible. 
and i asked him not whence he was neither told he me his name but he said unto me behold thou shalt conceive and bear a son and now drink no wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing for the child shall be a nazarite unto god from the womb to the day of his death then manoah entreated the lord and said o lord i pray thee let the man of god whom thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born and god hearkened to the voice of manoah and the angel of god came again unto the woman as she sat in the field but manoah her husband was not with her and the woman made haste and ran and told her husband and said unto him behold the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me that day and manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him art thou the man that spokest unto the woman and he said i am and manoah said now when thy word cometh to pass what shall be the rule for the child and what shall be done with him and the angel of the lord said unto manoah of all that i said unto the woman let her beware she may not eat of anything that cometh of the grapevine neither let her drink wine or strong drink nor eat any unclean thing all that i commanded her let her observe and manoah said unto the angel of the lord i pray thee let us detain thee that we may make ready a kid for thee and the angel of the lord said unto manoah though thou detain me i will not eat of thy bread and if thou wilt make ready a burnt offering thou must offer it unto the lord for manoah knew not that he was the angel of the lord and manoah said unto the angel of the lord what is thy name that when thy words come to pass we may do thee honour and the angel of the lord said unto him wherefore askest thou after my name seeing it is hidden so manoah took the kid with the meal offering and offered it upon the rock unto the lord and the angel did wondrously and manoah and his wife looked on for it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the lord ascended in the flame of the altar and manoah and his wife looked on and they fell on their faces to the ground but the angel of the lord did no more appear to manoah or to his wife then manoah knew that he was the angel of the lord and manoah said unto his wife we shall surely die because we have seen god but his wife said unto him if the lord were pleased to kill us he would not have received a burnt offering and a meal offering at our hand neither would he have shown us all these things nor would at this time have told such things as these and the woman bore a son and called his name samson and the child grew and the lord blessed him and the spirit of the lord began to move him in mahane dan between zorah and eshtaol chapter fourteen and samson went down to timnah and saw a woman in timnah of the daughters of the philistines and he came up and told his father and his mother and said i have seen a woman in timnah of the daughters of the philistines now therefore get her for me to wife then his father and his mother said unto him is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised philistines and samson said unto his father get her for me for she pleaseth me well but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the lord for he sought an occasion against the philistines now at that time the philistines had rule over israel then went samson down and his father and his mother to timnah and came to the vineyards of timnah and behold a young lion roared against him and the spirit of the lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as one would have rent a kid and he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father or his mother what he had done and he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased samson well 
and after a while he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey and he scraped it out into his hands and went on eating as he went and he came to his father and mother and gave unto them and they did eat but he told them not that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion and his father went down unto the woman and samson made there a feast for so used the young men to do and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought thirty companions to be with him and samson said unto them let me now put forth a riddle unto you if ye can declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out then i will give you thirty linen garments and thirty changes of raiment but if ye cannot declare it me then shall ye give me thirty linen garments and thirty changes of raiment and they said unto him put forth thy riddle that we may hear it and he said unto them out of the eater came forth food and out of the strong came forth sweetness and they could not in three days declare the riddle and it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto samson's wife entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire have ye called us hither to impoverish us and samson's wife wept before him and said thou dost but hate me and lovest me not thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and wilt thou not tell it me and he said unto her behold i have not told it my father nor my mother and shall i tell thee and she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she pressed him sore and she told the riddle to the children of her people and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion and he said unto them if ye had not ploughed with my heifer ye had not found out my riddle and the spirit of the lord came mightily upon him and he went down to ashkelon and smote thirty men of them and took their spoil and gave the changes of raiment unto them that declared the riddle and his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house but samson's wife was given to his companion whom he had had for his friend chapter fifteen but it came to pass after a while in the time of wheat harvest that samson visited his wife with a kid and he said i will go in to my wife into the chamber but her father would not suffer him to go in and her father said i verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her therefore i gave her to thy companion is not her younger sister fairer than she take her i pray thee instead of her and samson said unto them this time shall i be quits with the philistines when i do them a mischief and samson went and caught three hundred foxes and took torches and turned tail to tail and put a torch in the midst between every two tails and when he had set the torches on fire he let them go into the standing corn of the philistines and burnt up both the shocks and the standing corn and also the oliveyards then the philistines said who hath done this and they said samson the son-in-law of the timnite because he hath taken his wife and given her to his companion and the philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire and samson said unto them if ye do after this manner surely i will be avenged of you and after that i will cease and he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter and he went down and dwelt in the cleft of the rock of etam then the philistines went up and pitched in judah and spread themselves against lehi and the men of judah said why are ye come up against us and they said to bind samson are we come up to do to him as he hath done to us then three thousand men of judah went down to the cleft of the rock of etam and said to samson knowest thou not that the philistines are rulers over us what then is this that thou hast done unto us and he said unto them 
as they did unto me so have i done unto them and they said unto him we are come down to bind thee that we may deliver thee into the hand of the philistines and samson said unto them swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves and they spoke unto him saying no but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand but surely we will not kill thee and they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock when he came unto lehi the philistines shouted as they met him and the spirit of the lord came mightily upon him and the ropes that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands dropped from off his hands and he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and smote a thousand men therewith and samson said with the jawbone of an ass heaps upon heaps with the jawbone of an ass have i smitten a thousand men and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and that place was called ramoth lehi and he was sore athirst and called on the lord and said thou hast given this great deliverance by the hand of thy servant and now shall i die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised but god cleaved the hollow place that is in lehi and there came water thereout and when he had drunk his spirit came back and he revived wherefore the name thereof was called en hakore which is in lehi unto this day and he judged israel in the days of the philistines twenty years chapter sixteen and samson went to gaza and saw there a harlot and went in unto her and it was told the gazites saying samson is come hither and they compassed him in and lay in wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying let be till morning light then we will kill him and samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and laid hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and plucked them up bar and all and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the mountain that is before hebron and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of sorek whose name was delilah and the lords of the philistines came up unto her and said unto her entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver and delilah said to samson tell me i pray thee wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee and samson said unto her if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that were never dried then shall i become weak and be as any other man then the lords of the philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings which had not been dried and she bound him with them now she had liars in wait abiding in the inner chamber and she said unto him the philistines are upon thee samson and he broke the bowstrings as a string of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire so his strength was not known and delilah said unto samson behold thou hast mocked me and told me lies now tell me i pray thee wherewith thou mightest be bound and he said unto her if they only bind me with new ropes wherewith no work hath been done then shall i become weak and be as any other man so delilah took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him the philistines are upon thee samson and the liars in wait were abiding in the inner chamber and he broke them from off his arms like a thread and delilah said unto samson hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound and he said unto her if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web and she fastened it with the pin and said unto him the philistines are upon thee samson and he awoke out of his sleep and plucked away the pin of the beam and the web and she said unto him how canst thou say i love thee when thy heart is not with me thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth 
and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him that his soul was vexed unto death and he told her all his heart and said unto her there hath not come a razor upon my head for i have been a nazarite unto god from my mother's womb if i be shaven then my strength will go from me and i shall become weak and be like any other man and when delilah saw that he had told her all his heart she sent and called for the lords of the philistines saying come up this once for he hath told me all his heart then the lords of the philistines came up unto her and brought the money in their hand and she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and had the seven locks of his head shaven off and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the philistines are upon thee samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said i will go out as at other times and shake myself but he knew not that the lord was departed from him and the philistines laid hold on him and put out his eyes and they brought him down to gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven and the lords of the philistines gathered them together to offer a great sacrifice unto dagon their god and to rejoice for they said our god hath delivered samson our enemy into our hand and when the people saw him they praised their god for they said our god hath delivered into our hand our enemy and the destroyer of our country who hath slain many of us and it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said call for samson that he may make us sport and they called for samson out of the prison house and he made sport before them and they set him between the pillars and samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand suffer me that i may fill the pillars whereupon the house resteth that i may lean upon them now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the philistines were there and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while samson made sport and samson called unto the lord and said o lord god remember me i pray thee and strengthen me i pray thee only this once o god that i may be this once avenged of the philistines for my two eyes and samson took fast hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house rested and leaned upon them the one with his right hand and the other with his left and samson said let me die with the philistines and he bent with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein so the dead that he slew at his death were more than they that he slew in his life then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between zorah and eshtaol in the burying place of manoah his father and he judged israel twenty years the end of judges chapters thirteen through sixteen recording by mark penfold Section 7 of the Holy Scriptures according to the Masoretic Text and New Translation, Judges. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Judges, Section 7, Mika's Idol, How the Tribe of Dan Conquers Its Territory in the North, Chapter 17 through 18. Now there was a man of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Mika, and he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred pieces of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou didst utter a curse, and didst also speak it in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be my son of the Lord. And he restored the eleven hundred pieces of silver to his mother, and his mother said, I verily dedicate the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. And when he restored the money unto his mother, his mother took two hundred pieces of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image. And it was in the house of Micah, and the man Micah had a house of God. 
and he made an ephod and a teraphim, and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem in Judah, in the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city, out of Bethlehem in Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem in Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten pieces of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite as my priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day there had nothing been allotted unto them among the tribes of Israel for an inheritance. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their whole number, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtaol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land. And they came to the hill country of Ephraim unto the house of Micah, and lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned aside thither, and said unto him, Who brought thee hither? And what doest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus hath Micah dealt with me, and he hath hired me, and I am become his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we are going shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed, and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt in security after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. For there was none in the land possessing authority that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians, and had no dealings with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshtal, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, and let us go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go, and to enter in to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and the land is large, for God hath given it into your hand. A place where there is no want, it hath everything that is in the earth. And there set forth from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah, and out of Eshtal, six hundred men girt with weapons of war. And they went up, and encamped in kiriath Jerim in Judah, wherefore that place was called Mahanadon, unto this day. Behold, it is behind kiriath Jerim, And they passed thence unto the hill country of Ephraim, and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out of the country of Laish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned aside thither, and came to the house of the young man the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and asked him of his welfare. And the six hundred men girt with their weapons of war, who were of the children of Dan, stood by the entrance of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out of the land went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood by the entrance of the gate, with the six hundred men girt with weapons of war. And when these went into Micah's house, and fetched the graven image of the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image, the priest said unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, 
lay thy hand upon thy mouth and go with us and be to us a father and a priest is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or to be priest unto a tribe and a family in israel and the priest's heart was glad and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people so they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle and the goods before them when they were a good way from the house of mika the men that were in the houses near to mika's house were gathered together and overtook the children of dan and they cried unto the children of dan and they turned their faces and said unto mika what aileth thee that thou comest with such a company and he said ye have taken away my god which i made and the priest and are gone away and what have i more and how then say ye unto me what aileth thee and the children of dan said unto him let not thy voice be heard among us lest angry fellows fall upon you and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household and the children of dan went their way and when mika saw that they were too strong for him he turned and went back unto his house and they took that which mika had made and the priest whom he had and came unto laish unto a people quiet and secure and smote them with the edge of the sword and they burnt the city with fire and there was no deliverer because it was far from zidon and they had no dealings with any man and it was in the valley that lieth by beth rehob and they built the city and dwelt therein and they called the name of the city dan after the name of dan their father who was born unto israel howbeit the name of the city was laish at the first and the children of dan set up for themselves the graven image and jonathan the son of gershom the son of manasseh he and his sons were priests to the tribe of the danites until the day of the captivity of the land so they set them up mika's graven image which he made all the time that the house of god was in shiloh end of judges chapters seventeen and eighteen